and the first afternoon episode of this, uh, you know, everyday chat. My name is Godfred Akutobua for as usual live on Facebook. You can catch the highlights later on our Twitter handles, Pulse Ghana. You can catch it on our main uh, Twitter handle, Pulse Ghana Sports. And um, what am I talking about today? Okay, today I'm talking about the sports minister and these visits that have been happening. I'll be telling you about them. We'll be talking about the Black Starlets. In about 30 minutes, the Black Starlets will be in action. I have the starting 11. A few changes have been made, and I'll be explaining to you why those changes have been made. I'll be talking about the local Black Stars. I'll talk about Sule Muniru. If the name sounds familiar, it's because he's the younger brother of Sule Muntai. And then I'll be going through my end-of-year awards. I named my flops of the year. I'll be naming my most improved players of the year as well. So, Lots and lots to talk about. As usual, you can keep your comments coming and your questions. I'll be answering them as I rant and rave and explain and analyze on the game plan. Okay, where to begin? Sports minister. Okay, so that's not like really at the sports minister, but since he's the boss, I'm really going to ask him a question. I thought we had gotten past this business of sending minister and deputy minister to tournaments and whatnot to go and talk to players waste of money in my estimation they don't need it frankly because they're the management committee the president sends them a goodwill message after the president has sent a goodwill message why again do we need a minister to go and tell the players to win and this is the semi-final of an under 17 tournament and you know why i'm upset by this this is because i'm talking about gabon here then a 17 tournament that is ongoing. We are all excited that the team is doing well. Everybody's excited. I'm excited. But we need to be able to separate excitement from good practice. And what is not good practice, post what we learned from Brazil 2014, is this whole business of wasting resources that we do not have, resources from the sports ministry that can be invested in other things, in making these trips. Now, when the team went to Gabon, the newly appointed head of the National Sports Authority, the Honorable uh, Mensa, Safo Mensa, was in Gabon with the team. He spent about a week with the team and then returned. It's like they are running shift. As soon as the NSA boss returned, the Deputy Sports Minister is now in Gabon to go and talk to the boys. What is this? So what exactly is it that the Deputy Sports Minister is going to tell the boys that the National Sports Authority boss could not stay and tell the boys? And from what I've been told, if the boys make the final, the sports minister will fly to Gabon to go and watch the game. I mean, I don't get this. How exactly is he going to influence the boys' performance with these things? You know, we need to get to the point where we let a machine run. The team is there. They are playing well. They have management committee members. Let the management deal with whatever issues that the boys have. But this business of every now and then seeing a sports minister sit in a plane, go and talk to the team, Come back, NSA boss, sit in a plane, he'll go with an entourage, get per diems, whatever, go and talk to the team, come back, it really needs to stop. And this is a sports minister who had promised us he was not going to do more of the same. We've seen this for the past 20 years. Okay, Isaac Asiyama came to the job promising us that he was going to do things differently. Now, in two weeks, we've had two high-ranking members or high-ranking officers of the sports authority, uh, sorry, of the sports ministry, going to Gabon to go and talk to the boys. So after this game, Pius Hajide, who is the deputy sports minister, will return. If they make the final, then uh, the sports minister himself will go because there's greater glory ahead in the final. Everybody wants to be in front of the camera. Kusin Yantechi, who is acting calf boss at the moment in Gabon, has been there to talk to the team. How many dignitaries do you want to go and talk to the team? How many do you need to talk to an under 17 team to get results? Realistically, I don't, I don't really get it. So I think that we need to be able to separate these things, okay, and get the job done. Very, very important for me, right? Okay, so enough about the sports minister and uh, his activities with sending these things there. I'm going to talk about the starlets since we are, you know, with the theme. And they are playing in a bit. Like I know a lot of you guys will be watching in about 30 minutes, so I'm going to make this quick. The game is going to be live on all the TV channels that you people like to watch. And I want to go through the starting lineup for the team, you know, and then we'll discuss how it's going to go because there are a few notable absentees. In fact, two notable absentees uh, in the team, and you, you, you'll be interested in knowing these ones. Okay, so let me go through the squad for you. All right, so Danlad Ibrahim, 
uh, is in goal. He's the goalkeeper, Kumar Sante Kotoko. Rashid al -Hassan is playing. John Otu is playing. Abdul Razak Yusuf is playing. Faisal Osman is playing. Bismarck Terry Owusu is in. Now, Bismarck Terry Owusu is replacing everybody's favorite player, Sule. The chap in the number seven shirt, Ibrahim Sule, scorer of two goals, is not going to be playing in the game against Niger. Uh, Edmond Akumensa, who did not play in the game against Guinea. In fact, he came on as a substitute. He's the guy in the number four uh, jersey. He plays on the left side of defense. He's the left fullback. He is also uh, making a return to the team. Uh, Mohamed Idris is in. Gabriel Lave uh, is also returning. Eric Eyia, uh, the striker, the, I think he's the top goal scorer in the tournament. He has scored five goals so far. The captain of the team, the chap who wears the number six jersey, um, is playing. And Emmanuel Toku, number 10. Yeah, Toku is back. So this is the Ghana starting 11 uh, that is going to face Niger. What do you think? Is this a team that can win? Uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, will be worried by the absence of Ibrahim Sule uh, in the number seven. But let me just run through the starting 11 for you again. Dalad Ibrahim, Rashid al -Hassan, John Otu, Abdul Razak, you see Faisal Osman, Bismarck Terry Usu, who is new. A lot of you might not have seen Bismarck. Edmond Akumensa. Uh, Mohamed Idris, Gabriel Leve, uh, Eric Eya, and Emmanuel Toku. All right, so these are the players who have been named uh, to the starting 11 by Coach Park Wissifebe. Now, this game is going to be interesting, and it's not going to be easy. You know, we scored nine goals in our first two games, and I'm not taking away from the victory, but those were pretty easy games. Cameroon was easy. Gabon was a hastily assembled side. It was a team that did not even exist two weeks before the tournament began. So Gabon was... But the game against Guinea was a tough one because Guinea was a well-prepared team, a well-drilled team. And we had issues breaking down Guinea. Now, Niger would not be as easy to break down as well. And I'm going to tell you why. They are not really good at the senior level, but the junior level, Niger is like playing Ghana. A lot of their players were born in Ghana. A lot of their players play in Ghana. There are a lot of mighty Jets players in there. You know, Niger, what Niger have been able to perfect is a scouting system in the Zongo areas of Ghana football. And as soon as uh, there's a good player of Nigerian extract born in the Zamama areas or in the Zongo areas, Niger quickly capture the player and send them back. So this is the under-17 team. And I checked with uh, a member of the Ghana Blacks Starless Management Committee who said, yes, he had spotted a couple of Ghanaian boys uh, with the Nigerian team. So these are boys who know our game. They know the Ghanaian attitude. They know the Ghanaian style. They are very well organized for a Nigerian team. And that is what is going to make this game very, very difficult. Ghana will need to be patient if Ghana wants to win this game. I don't think that Ghana will win this game with the relentless attacking style we saw in the first two games. I think this is where the experience of Pakwisi Fabian as a coach is important because he has to be able to calm the boys down when th the, the going gets tough. The going will get tough. If Ghana scores early, it's going to be fantastic. I think that if Ghana scores early, they will route Niger. But if Ghana does not get an early goal, this is a game that will become a game of attrition. Niger are very physical. They are quite tall and are going to make sure that they restrict the flair players of Ghana. So that means like a player like Toku is going to get a lot of heavy-handed treatment. Eya, the captain who has proven to be a very lethal striker, is going to get a lot of physical attention. So Park Wissi Fabian needs to talk to his boys to expect to play the long game. To play the long game. It's very important at this level. These are the times, these are, these are the times that you actually teach the boys what to do. Because these are the kind of games that from it, it only gets difficult from this level. We are going to the World Cup. The games are going to get more important. They're going to the stakes are even higher than this. But I think that this Nigerian team will not pose too much of a problem, but they still pose a big enough problem for us to respect them. So at 2.30, which is what, yeah, about 26 minutes from now, when Ghana lines up, those of you who are watching, don't expect Ghana to run riot over this Nigerian side. It could happen, but don't expect it to happen. And when it does not happen, have patience, because it's a very experienced side that has been put together. It's a very Ghana-based side, I must tell you, that has been put together, okay? So 2.30, we'll wish Ghana, Black Starless, and Pakusi Fabian. Well, we hope to see them in the final. What are your predictions? What is going to be the scoreline at the end of the game? I, I say 2-1 for Ghana. Yeah, I'm not going to be overly confident. So I say 2-1 for Ghana. I'll check the comments and see 
what some of you are saying. Okay, so Kwame Eji, I just told you the time. Kwame Eji, the time is at 2.30. Ghana is kicking off against um, Niger at 2.30. Okay, let me move the conversation on. And the local Black Stars, big game has been announced. You know, the local Black Stars have been in camp for the past two weeks, training with uh, Coach Kwesiapia and his new technical team. And tomorrow, on Thursday, uh, at their cross post, they'll be playing Benin in a warm-up game. And one thing that has caught my attention is the way they are just calling their players, you know. Today this one goes, this one comes. Today this one goes, this one comes. A lot of players have been called. And in fact, just yesterday, two more goalkeepers were called. Interlice goalkeeper Kwame Ba, who leads the clean sheet uh, charts in Ghana this season, has been called to camp. And Steven Kweku, former Liberty Professionals goalkeeper, now applying his trade with uh, Tema Youth, has also been called. His nickname is Wango. Short guy, he's like this. I wonder what he's going to do in the national team. He's like this. But, well, we'll see what he's, he brings to the fore. Uh, uh, Mohamed Nuhu of Wafa also called into camp. A lot of people not very happy that he was called at the expense of his defensive partner. But he is the coach's choice. So tomorrow, for those of you who have time during the holiday, make your way to the Accra Sports Stadium to watch the local Black Stars. You know, this is supposed to be the result of the Black Stars. And it's even more important, considering that the main national team will be named the following day. So those of the local Blasters players who make a big impression. And I'm telling you, I have a feeling if anybody will break into the team, it will be from the defense. It will not be from midfield or attack. I think that the defenders and the goalkeepers stand the best chance of being named in the original, in the proper Black Stars squad when Kusiapia names it on Friday. So big, big opportunity for a lot of the players to stake a claim for Ghana's friendly games in the United States against uh, the U.S. and Mexico, and also in June against Ethiopia when Ghana plays its first AFCON 2019 qualifier. So make a turn for that game. All right, so I'm going to shift a bit. I'll get back to football. But there's something that caught my eye that I need to talk about, and it has to do with boxing. Now, you know, boxing is a passion, right? So, all right, let me see. Papa J. El Capitano, I, I need to read a couple of the messages. Papa J. El Capitano, uh, you are saying which player has been your standout player for the under-17 Obviously, I think that the best player, you might, you might be surprised by this, but it's the left back of Ghana for me, Akumensa. A lot of things, a lot of good things that Ghana does happens from Akumensa. I'm not the kind of guy who looks out for just the flash. I know that Toku has caught the eye with his skill, Eya has caught the eye with his goals, but if you watch the team properly, the facilitator in chief is always Akumensa, the guy in the number four, the left wing back. That's awesome work, has great stamina, goes back and forth. So to answer your question, Papa J. El Capitano, uh, Aku Mensa has been my standout player of the tournament for Ghana so far. Jacob Adefio, you're watching from Australia. Okay, uh, keep watching, keep watching. Uh, tell a lot of Australians to watch. What time is it in Australia, Jacob? It should be like, tell you the force. It's like almost 10 p.m. in Australia, right? Way ahead of us, 10 or 11 p.m. And you are watching Pulse Ghana Sports in Australia. Shall I applaud you? <laughs> Jacob at FU, I applaud you. All right, let me move on and talk about boxing. I promise to talk about boxing. I caught it. Everybody remembers I caught it, right? Once the most feared welterweight boxer in the world. These days, a bit of a recluse keeps to himself. But he decided to come and talk about boxing. And the reason I'm pissed off is that, you know, since I caught it quit boxing, he hasn't really given much to boxing. He doesn't train anybody. He doesn't visit any of the gyms. He does not own his own gym but has the nerve to come out and criticize other boxers simply because he was world champion. I think he should shut up. Yeah, I, I give him his respect. Former fa fantastic boxer. But I think that you lose the right to make certain comments when you do not contribute. Azuma Nelson can talk all he wants about Ghana boxing 24-7. Nobody will hold anything against him because he contributes, be it positive or negative. He actually contributes. He trains boxers. He has his own gym. Ghana benefited from his wealth. How did you benefit from Aikote's wealth? Aikote was a bully. He would park his car in front of the stadium and, let in, let, and block other people from entering the stadium. So when I read that he's upset about the lack of development in Ghana boxing, I say Ghana boxing is not development because when you, have, when you had the money, when you had the opportunity, you did not pass on the knowledge. Who has Aikote trained? Who? Just name, perhaps I'm ignorant. But who has Aikote trained as a boxer since he quit? Does not own a gym. He sits in his house. We meet him up. He watches more football than boxing. 
That I can guarantee. I've met him at several football games, especially in the Prime Prime area. I caught him watching more football than boxing. So when I hear I caught him come out and say Ghana boxing is not doing well, I say I caught him. Shut up. Let us talk about the Ghana boxing. If it's not doing well, we'll tell you. But don't come and tell us anything. I'll, I'll move on from that. You should not upset me, Kra. Okay. Oh, uh, Jacob Adelphi has told us the time in Australia. He says it's 12. So it's midnight <laughs> in Australia. Nice one. Um, Papa J, okay. So you're going to watch out for uh, Akumensa. Good. Edward Boating, you're watching from Boston. How is Connecticut? The Celtics flopped. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not supposed to talk about basketball on the show, but your Boston Celtics got... You got lighted up by Kyrie Evan this morning. I watched that game. That's the reason why I'm feeling sleepy today. I was watching that basketball game. So my guy in Boston, Edward Boating, I'm sorry. If you're a Celtics fan, Kyrie Evan has given you some sleepless nights. Kwame Ajay, you're watching from Germany. I'm, uh, then you're not a very happy guy. Your German under-20 team is not doing too well. Also at the under-20 World Cup. Timothy Apia says we should pray for the under-17 guys watching from Salt Lake City. How is Utah? Timothy. You are in Salt Lake. Utah is a nice place. I'm sure it's cold by now. It's constantly cold in Utah, right? Okay. I have um, a, a couple of other topics to go through, and then we'll be out of it. Let me talk about Sule Muniru. From Sule Muniru, we'll end the show because, like I said, you people have to go and watch the under 17. In fact, I also want to go and watch the under 17. That's why I'm rushing through the show. <laughs> okay. But Sule Muniru. Now, Sule Muniru is the younger brother of Sule Muntari. <laughs> Now, his contract has been terminated. Fifi Araman told you this. His contract has been terminated. But I'm going to tell you why I'm revisiting this topic. Terminated by Star Bucharesti because he fought with uh, Tanase. Now, Tanase is a, uh, a Romanian international, his teammate. They fought, and both players have had their contracts cancelled by Star Bucharesti. Perhaps the most storied Romanian club in the history of Euro uh, Romanian football. Now, he hasn't gone to sign his part of the termination contract, but the truth is he will no longer play for Star Bucharest. I doubt he'll even play in Romania again. He'll look to leave because we had heard complaints that his salary was not coming through and whatnot. But I have an issue with Sule Muniru. He's a fantastic footballer. Those of you who watched him play, he's talented. Problem is, he thinks he's his brother. But you are not Sule Muntai. You are talented. But you look, you are not your... He's always, since his childhood days, with Liberty Professional. This is the guy who will show up for training in a hammer. Yeah, everybody else will come in a bus. He will show up in a hammer. Meanwhile, you are playing at under 17 level. So he's always thought he was his brother. And I think that has affected his development. Instead of looking to strike out on his own, to make his own name, he's always benefited of being the brother of Suleiman Tai. And that is what has stifled his growth. And that is what has also, I would say, nourished his attitude. That's a very poor attitude. He's had several issues, several clashes. This is one of them. Contract terminated now. Are you Sule Muntari? No, you're not. You're Sule Muniru. Um, if he had concentrated on his game, this guy would have made several national teams. Easy. Easy. But he's never caught the national eye. I don't, remember, I don't, I don't have one memorable game that he's played. Yeah. Compare, you know, when, when everybody talks about Sule Muntari, Forget about the issues, but the football speaks for the man. Sule Muniru, the issues speak for the man. Opposite. So he, he needs to really change his attitude. Like, forget it, bro. Your brother has his achievements. You need to work on yours and get yours. So those of you who know Sule Muniru, tell him, God, I could set so on the game plan. You are not your brother. Okay? Ty clean up that attitude. Focus on the game. You are still 25 years old. Long career ahead of you. And do something positive. I'll take a couple of comments and then I'll be getting out of here because uh, we need to go and watch the Black Star. Let's, let's see what you guys are saying uh, on our... Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. I, I'm still, I still haven't gone through my list of most improved players. I'm going to go through that and then we'll wrap up. But I just need a couple of other comments and then I will go. All right, so uh, now Kweku, I think we should use the new guys uh, trying to make the blasters in our friend international. I agree. Um, Percy Painsel says, I guess he wasn't disciplined enough. Talent without discipline can't take you for that much. I agree. Uh, can you help us watch the under 17 match live if possible? Edward, copyright issues, plenty. If I help you, they'll close me down. 
<laughs> so I can't help, but I think you can stream it online, Edward. So um, Edward Boating, just try a couple of links online because it's a CAF tournament. Very likely it is available online. So just check a couple of streams. I can't name links here for you, but check a couple of streams. You know the streams to check. Uh, you'll be able to get something. Um, KK Tina Dubuadu, you want to know when the under 17 match is coming off? Well, it's coming off in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah. So I hope I've answered the question for Citizen Dala. You are also watching. Uh, Isaac Mensah is watching from California. Okay. Uh, Nina, I just answered the question. The under 17 game is at 2 30. A lot of interest in that game. So I'll go over the starting line lineup again before I leave. But final one, I'm going to talk about my most improved players of the season. Now, on Monday, I listed the flops. The flops were two goalkeepers. Razak Braima, flop of the season. Adam Lassin Kwarasi, flop of the season. I'm going to talk about the most improved Ghanaian players in Europe this season. Richmond Boachie Adam, 16 goals in Serbia. Ref Star Belgrade didn't win the league. But this is a player who joined them on loan in January. And between January and May, has scored 16 goals. That's an incredible achievement. That's an incredible achievement. I, I, I doff my hat off to Richmond Boachie Adam. This is a player who has been on loan eight times. And he's 24 years old. It tells you where his career was going until he went to Serbia. He's played for Juventus, Genoa, Sassuolo twice, went to some team in Holland and ran away, played in Elche in Spain, played for Atlanta in Italy, did not work. Now, you know, on loan with uh, Red Star Belgrade in Serbia. He seems to have discovered himself. Maybe it's because there's nothing happening in Serbia, so he can focus on just the football. But he seems to be doing well. He's very much improved. So I'm happy for it. Because he's a guy... A lot of you guys had high hopes for, right? Like, to become the future of Ghana striking after Samuajan. Always looked like he had the potential. But pff, he seems to have petted it out. But now, seems to be rediscovering himself. Another player, I think, has improved greatly this season. It's a free aqua. You know, he lost form last season. Let me be honest with you. He lost form. But this season for Torino, he's had ups and downs. But his overall game has improved. He's become far more important for Torino. He's bec uh, uh, unless he's suspended, he's almost unbenchable these days. So I must acknowledge the performances of uh, a free aqua as well as one of my most improved players of the season. So I'll stick it with these two. And then uh, let me take a couple more messages and then we will go. Uh, Charlie, a lot of buggers are watching the show this afternoon. KK Tinedu from Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Good afternoon to you. Uh, Kuwait as well has Williams Ajete coming in. And uh, Abdul Abdallah, you are watching from Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. So, I will say goodbye. Let me quickly name the under-17 squad for you again and run away. Danlad Ibrahim will be in goal for Ghana. Rashid Alassan, John Otu, Abdul Razak, Yusuf, Faisal Osman, Bismarck Teriousu coming in for Ibrahim Sule on the right wing. Edmond Akumensa on the left side of defense. Mohamed Idrisu, uh, Gabriel Leve. Uh, Eric Eya striking for Ghana and Emmanuel Toku. So on that note, I will end this episode of the game plan. I'll be coming your way at another strange time, depending on what my director says. My name is Godfrey Akuto Boafo. Keep reading pulse.com.gh. Keep watching our videos. We've got exciting videos on our Facebook. So watch the videos, share the videos, tell everybody about Pulse. Have a good afternoon. Go Ghana.